Constance Sugiyama. Constance Sugiyama is a third generation Japanese Canadian who is an inspiration to young women and to many in the business community through her leadership in law, as a volunteer, and as an advocate. She has been described as a formidable, yet warm and inspiring leader who uses her impact to institute positive change in her many spheres of influence. Connie has enjoyed a 30-year career in law. She's a former deputy chair and partner of Fraser Milner Casgrain LLP and a partner and national executive member at Gowling Lafleur Henderson LLP. Beyond her outstanding law career, Connie Sugiyama is a dedicated volunteer who has served in many roles supporting healthcare, the arts and education, Japanese cultural organizations, and the advancement of women. She served as founding chair of the Heather L. Maines Memorial Scholarship Fund and founding director of Women in Capital Markets. And Connie is a former chair of the Hospital for Sick Children, the first woman to hold that position. Connie was recognized in 2014 as a member of the Order of Canada for her achievements as a lawyer and for her extensive civic engagement. <clears throat> Among her many achievements is her work with the Japanese Canadian community, which relates directly to the work done by many of the faculty and students in the Faculty of Law and in other faculties through the Center for Transitional Justice and Post-Conflict Reconstruction here at Western University. As many of you will know, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941, during the Second World War, more than 20,000 Canadian citizens of Japanese ancestry many of whom had lived in Canada for several generations and had Canadian citizenship, were suspected of aiding Japanese authorities in military espionage activities. These Canadian citizens were placed in internment camps. Many of the men were taken to work camps, and these families' homes, fishing boats, and other property were seized by the government and sold without the permission of their rightful owners. At the end of the war, in 1945, these Canadians of Japanese ancestry were released from the camps, but were banned for the next five years from living near the coast. They were unable to claim much of their property. More than half a century later, in 1988, after a considerable amount of lobbying by the Japanese Canadian community, the government awarded $21,000 to each Canadian of Japanese ancestry who had been interned under the Japanese-Canadian Redress Agreement. Connie has played an integral role in the Japanese-Canadian community, along with her family, and continues to monitor and speak out against human rights violations. Connie served as the director of the Japanese-Canadian Redress Foundation and the Japanese-Canadian Cultural Center, and she was the founding chair of the Japanese-Canadian Legacy Project, SIDAI. She remains a special advisor to the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center and the Japanese Canadian Redress Foundation. One of the many projects that Connie has been involved in is the collection and documentation and preservation of the stories of Japanese Canadians through audio and video recordings of Japanese Canadians who were born in the pre-war and war years. Throughout her career and life, Connie has continued to push the bar higher and has provided encouragement and inspiration to many in Ontario and across Canada through her work, her words, and her actions. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and in the name of the Senate, I ask you to confer the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa upon Constance Sugiyama. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor, I admit you to the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Congratulations, Dr. Sugiyama.
On behalf of all assembled here today, I should now like to invite our newest alumnus, Dr. Connie Sugiyama, to address convocation. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, distinguished faculty, graduates, family, and friends. It's such a privilege to share this wonderful occasion with you all. I'm both humbled and grateful for this great honor that you have conferred upon me and my family. May I first offer my heartfelt congratulations to all of the graduates gathered here today and to your families. Well done. I have to confess that I have struggled with what I would say to you today. What wisdom could I import? What advice could I share with you that you haven't heard a dozen times? And furthermore, what would have resonance to both law and nursing graduates? I could quote from one of my heroes, and apparently yours at the Faculty of Law, Lord Denning, but the nurses might say, who was he? Or I could quote from another hero, Florence Nightingale, and risk boring the lawyers. <laughs> Over the last few months, I've made many notes. I've ripped them up. I've read far too many inspiring convocation addresses by far too many very important people. And I developed a serious case of writer's block. In fact, I was rendered literally speechless. But then I had an unexpected encounter that helped me bring all of this together. I've been going to the same cheese shop in Toronto's Kensington Market for decades, and a very nice gentleman helps me every time. I'm treated very well, and as a loyal client, I sometimes get a discount or something free to try. On a recent visit, he was filling my order, and he asked me, he said, do you mind if I ask you what you do? And I said, no, not at all. What do you think I do? You're a nurse. I said, well, that's very kind. Why do you think that? And he said, well, you're always here with your parents, your nieces, your daughter, your friends, and you're always looking after them. You seem like a caring person. I said, well, thank you, but actually, I was a Bay Street lawyer for 35 years. <laughs> he stopped dead in his tracks, looked at me, and he said, you're kidding me. <laughs> I thought, uh-oh, there go the perks, so I had to apologize, and I told him that I was a lapsed lawyer that I had retired three years ago. So lesson number one, ideas, inspiration, and opportunity can come from the most surprising places and when you least expect it. Listen carefully and be open to the possibilities. Are lawyers really the uncaring, bottom-feeding pond scum of thousands of jokes? <laughs> Some may be, but by and large, I've always been very proud to be part of what I still believe, after more than 35 years, is an honorable profession, a necessary one that stands between us and tyranny. In fact, nurses and lawyers have much in common. We are all professionals, trained and committed to service, and to the highest standards of trust and integrity. We are duty-bound to care for our clients and patients, often when they are in high distress, to the best of our abilities. And that brings me to lesson number two. Hubris and dogma are the enemies of professionalism. Avoid them both, if at all possible. As a third generation Japanese Canadian, I aspire to the values that my grandparents brought with them on the boat from Japan more than 100 years ago, one of which is humility. However, I do have an ego, and I've been guilty of hubris from time to time, but I've always been brought down to earth with a thud by my family. Here's one of my favorite examples. Shortly after I was appointed chair of the hospital for sick children, I was called upon to attend a very important fundraiser at the Four Seasons Hotel. I was late, I went bounding up the escalators, and there were a couple of nice ladies at the top of the escalator who were registering people for this event. I was asked, what is your name? And I said, Sugiyama. And she seemed to recognize it immediately, which is odd because I normally have to say it three times and spell it at least twice. 
So I um, puffed myself up to my full five foot height and I said, oh, she must know that I'm the chair. Well, she looked at me and she said, wow. She said, are you related to Dr. Sugiyama? <laughs> and I said, which one, Henry or Jim? And she said, Henry. She said, your father looked after us from the time my parents immigrated from Italy to the day he retired. We loved him, we miss him, please give him our best regards. Well, that put a little prick in my balloon, I have to tell you. So remember, it's not always about you. And what about dogma, which one might define as a set of beliefs accepted by members of a group without question or doubt? For lawyers, perhaps the greatest dogma is our fee-for-service model and the worship of the billable hour. As new law graduates, you must question whether this model serves the best interests of your clients and our profession. Does it reward good outcomes and align our interests with our clients? There is increasing evidence that it does not. The mother of professional nursing, Florence Nightingale, said, doctors prescribe, nurses provide. And this was the prevailing healthcare dogma for more than 100 years. But now, nurse practitioners may prescribe. Many of the major teaching hospitals are run by nurses, and the possibilities for nursing graduates know no limits. But there will be other dogma in your professional career to be questioned and buried, so be aware, challenge them. And on the topic of Florence Nightingale, when I was in London last month, I visited the museum that bears her name at St. Thomas Hospital. And it's not because I had to give this address, but because she was one of my very early heroes, along with Clara Barton and Edith Cavell. The museum is a tribute to the nursing profession over the past 100 plus years. And on the wall, there was a poster that immediately caught my eye. A woman, obviously a nurse, is depicted holding a hypodermic needle. The caption read, life is full of little pricks. Lesson, lesson number three, avoid those little pricks, literally <laughs> and figuratively, and above all else, do not be one. <laughs> Should you be skeptical about lesson three, there is always lesson four. It's a tiny, small world, and it's getting smaller. So it's best to be known as a decent, honorable, and caring person, or alternatively, be very selective about the people you annoy or offend. Here's my final illustration of the importance of lesson four. About four years ago, my daughter was trekking in the western Himalayas and stopped for the evening in a remote hill station. There were some other young people there, and they got to talking. Two of them were Canadians, and they were medical students. Guess from where? The University of Western Ontario. And more amazingly, they had been taught here by Dr. Akira Sugimoto, who happens to be married to my cousin, Dr. Joanne, Su Joanne Kirby, both of whom are here today. So remember, it's a small world, and it's better to be known as a good person. In closing, I hope that my life lessons from a lapsed lawyer have been modestly helpful, and at the very least, that you are still awake. Congratulations to you all, and very best wishes, and thank you again for this wonderful and very special honor. Have a wonderful summer.